They posed the shots. They oversold the models, mainly. Gurned. Mimed suffering for the still. The ones who had to do it in real time, bounce off ropes and take a fall the right way, knew that sometimes less was more, and that a face is less expressive to a punter in the cheap seats than a limb banged on sprung canvas and a curse at the right time. Those chicks in the apartment shoots, they played their passion close up for an audience of boys who had no concept of the pain a girl can take without a grimace. Theo recollects he had to coach the tough ones, act out for them the cries the boys expected, model all the pretty ways to scream. In 1976, the late Bruno Sammartino was asked his opinion on the species of journalism attendant on the spectacle in which he had gained his celebrity. I very seldom look at wrestling magazines, Sammartino replied. When I do, I get angry. Unfortunately, most of the time they have my picture on the cover next to two practically naked girls putting holds on each other. The juxtaposition to which Sammartino referred usually graced the cover of London Publishing's Sports Review Wrestling magazine, which, in the 1970s, in a bid to overcome its declining circulation, began publishing a series of pictorials in an invented genre which its publisher, Stan Weston, dubbed Apartment Wrestling. Weston's gambit worked. Spicing up the magazine with these images of models tussling increased sales, to the chagrin of both the men and women who plied their brutal trade between the ropes. Sammartino's anger at the juxtaposition of his own work with the apartment wrestling shoots fascinates because of the questions it raises about the verisimilitude and respectability of wrestling. What is the difference, qualitatively, between two practically naked men putting holes on each other in a ring and two practically naked women putting holes on each other in a studio made up to look like a private apartment? Both are staged spectacles, burlesques of genuine physical combat. But what makes the second spectacle not just a burlesque, but a burlesque of a burlesque? And what does it mean that both these genres of photography, the action shots and portraits of the more or less legitimate grapplers like Sammartino, Classy Freddy Blassie and Andre the Giant, and the posed shots of distaff combat, were taken by the same man? That man was Theo Errett, a jobbing photographer whose work photographing boxers and wrestlers for the Olympic Auditorium in Los Angeles and the artistic sensibility he brought to his shots led to a lucrative relationship with the East Coast Wrestling magazines which documented the choreographed chaos of the squared circle in the pre-WWE territorial wrestling era. This association with the Olympic brought Eret into contact with Weston, who began to employ Eret photographing staged crime scenes for the lurid true detective magazines he published alongside his grapple mags, and Eret's skill at staging titillating violence, along with his familiarity as an observer of wrestling holds, made him an obvious choice to shoot the staged apartment clashes, in which he would instruct models to copy the holds in his Olympic photos, grimacing for the camera, selling the moves for still pictures. After Eret had shot his models and sent his contact sheets out east, Weston would choose the ones he liked and instruct one of his writers to concoct a story to go with them. These stories were somewhat recherché even for the Grand Guignol world of pro wrestling. Exquisite Mayhem, the story which lends its name to Tashin's coffee table anthology of Eret's work, appends to its accompanying photos a narrative which describes its warring women to hardened beauties who know their loveliness can't last forever, battling over an experimental treatment to retard the aging process. (sighs) Yeah. I know. Yeah. Wrestling has always been a disreputable career. Freestyle wrestling is looked down on by the rich as a working class sport. Professional wrestling is regarded with even greater contempt because it is a staged burlesque of legitimate combat. 
Eric's apartment wrestling photos, entirely posed to blow, in which the titillating aspect of bodies in conflict is foregrounded even more, in which the erotic subtext of all combative spectacles becomes the whole text, is reviled yet more. A burlesque of a burlesque, a parody of a pastiche of an unrespected pastime. There is, however, a sense in which Eret's work represents not a burlesque of wrestling, but captures the appeal and drama of the spectacle in perhaps its purest form. The Tashin collection of Eret's photography opens with Roland Barthes' essay Le Monde du Cache, The World of Wrestling, in which the French philosopher describes wrestling as not a sport, but a spectacle, in which it is in the body of the wrestler that we find the first key to the contest, for Bart, the physique of the wrestlers constitutes a basic sign which, like a seed, contains the whole fight. And the drama these bodies enact is one of suffering. The function of the wrestler is not to win. It is to go exactly through the motions which are expected of him. Wrestling offers excessive gestures, exploited to the limit of their meaning. In wrestling, a man who is down is exaggeratedly so, and completely fills the eyes of the spectators with the intolerable spectacle of his powerlessness. Change the gender of the subject, and you have an almost perfect description of the stage drama of Eret's apartment wrestling photos. Wrestling represents man's suffering with all the amplification of tragic masks. The wrestler who suffers in a hold which is reputedly cruel offers an excessive portrayal of suffering, like a primitive pieta. She exhibits for all to see her face, exaggeratedly contorted by an intolerable affliction. This is the spectacle we see in Eret's legitimate wrestling shots, and it is a distilled form of this spectacle, a Barthesian punctum, that we see in his less reputable work. And it is in some of those shots, not all, but some, the best examples of his work, that he distills what Barthes calls the orgy of evil which alone makes good wrestling into its purest form. Here is the heel who inflicts pain. Here is the jobber, the babyface, who suffers. Here are arms and legs, shoulders and sinews, fingers and throats deployed just so to create a tableau of idealised violence in the best of which two bodies combine to tell a story of suffering born and inflicted, which is far more compelling in the absence of its pathetic accompanying narrative, a spectacle which, to quote Barthes one more time, enacts the exact gestures of the most ancient purifications. Eret's apartment wrestling photos are softcore sleaze, aiming only at titillation, but they disturb because they carry in them the suggestion that they are not really so far removed from the pastiche of violence they parody. The suggestion that really this is what we desire even from the more legitimate combat sports and spectacles. The precise disposition of limbs, faces and centres of gravity which make suffering accessible and legible and tangible and beautiful. Hey, so thank you for uh, watching all the way through uh, this video, um, which is probably one of the first actual full, uh, aside from the Fallout piece from a few days ago, one of the first uh, full sort of video essay type uh, pieces I've actually done on this channel. Um, in this case, this is something that kind of grew out of the... Uh, the Struggle Play series that I'm working on, uh, which is uh, turning into a sort of spoken word monologue interspersed with poems, uh, which about the first act is up on this channel now, uh, in the form of three videos. Um, Struggle Play 1, I Want Chris to Call Me All the Slurs, uh, Struggle Play 2, Adele, or the first bully I had a crush on, and Struggle Play 3, Who Wants to View the Well-Adjusted Works of Francis Bacon, um, which is a series about my own complicated relationship uh, as a trans woman uh, and masochist uh, and survivor of sexual violence with, uh, with feminine violence. Um, which is something I'm still working on at the minute, and in a lot of the videos for uh, that project I have used a lot of Theo Eretz images uh, 
which I've ran through Pixlr in a variety of ways to um, to sort of accompany the the films that I've made to go with the uh, the first act of the piece. And in the course of that, I've spent a lot of time thinking about um, Eret's images and what makes them more compelling necessarily than you know other shots of this sort that you could use. And I think the thing with Eret is something about the Barthian punctum, really. He's very, very good at distilling um, these things, and so that's why there is this continuity between his legitimate work and his less legitimate work, obviously, with the massive proviso that, you know, this is not a hugely legitimate, you know, it's not a, you know, genre, um, even if you are just photographing normal wrestling, especially in the pre-WWE era. Um, so, yeah, um, so that's that. Uh, probably other uh, video essay style pieces will, um, you know, come up as where as I'm working on uh, the Struggle Play project. And if uh, and when they do, um, that will be interesting. At the minute, what we're probably going to go back to uh, for the next few videos uh, is uh, just the short sort of one poem videos that I've been doing where I'm experimenting, as I've said in previous videos, with this idea of being quiet and odd and a little bit off to the side so that the video doesn't necessarily, it's not just a piece to camera, it's not just performance footage. Um, I'm interested a lot in, in fact actually this is probably something which I should do a video about as well, um, but in the idea of refining yourself out of existence visually um, in the work, to paraphrase James Joyce, particularly if you think of uh, the examples. Obviously there's a Leisure Tay by Chris Marker, which of course is a film made entirely of still images, uh, but other things in that regard that I'm going for, I would suggest, would be uh, Patrick Kaler's Robinson films, London, Robinson in space and Robinson in ruins, which I'm probably definitely going to do something about at some point because I am kind of obsessed with those films. Um, and Derek Jarman's Blue as well, um, which is pretty much the ultimate in that that you can get, which is literally just a blue screen with uh, with text over it. Uh, so, well, well, with no text over it, actually, with voiceover over it, I should say. So those are... That's probably the next thing I'm going to be doing a long form piece about, but in the meantime, the forthcoming videos will just be poetry videos in that mode. Uh, thank you for watching, thank you for listening to this post uh, main video ramble. Uh, do all the usual stuff, um, like share, subscribe, click the bell, uh, comment uh, if you want to ask me if I am progressively losing my mind, which, uh, which I am, I'm, you know, technically mentally ill, so yeah, uh, in the, uh, in the comments section, um, but, uh, but yeah, uh, so I will get good at these sign-off things, this is not the video where that will happen, uh, thank you for your time, cheers, bye.